Okay, prosthetic mandible, you see already that I have changed the title. Talking about prosthetic management of the posterior mandible, it'd pretty much be like watching paint dry in the afternoon. So I decided we're gonna do posterior segments of both arches because a lot of the same principles apply. It's very difficult to speak for 40 minutes on just one area. Um, so I hope that's okay with you. And uh, as we move forward, I want to begin kind of where we left off a little this morning, that all phases of the treatment plan need to be completed before we initiate care. Uh, it, it's very, um, I think this is a really important issue. And it was nice to hear Stephen emphasize it as well. And it was nice to hear Waldemar emphasize this as well, because I think this is really one of the things that came out of the last ITI consensus conference that makes me really proud of the way the ITI thinks. That really we are being progressive about comprehensive management and thought process for how we treat patients. And if we look at the, the posterior segments of both arches, we are really interested again in, in a couple of very specific areas. What kind of implants do we use? Waldemar has already touched on short implants, but short implants with a micro roughened surface have more bone to implant contact than long implants with machine surface. So it's more than just the length of the implant. It's more than just the diameter of the implant. It's the surface. It's how well the surface interacts with the body and it's how well the surface interacts with different parts of the body and different parts of, of the mandible and the maxilla that make, uh, it make such a difference. Do we splint or do we not splint? Um, you know, again, we could talk all day. Everybody has their own opinion. A lot of this depends on the team that you work with. I've, I have a couple of patients that as we go through, I'll tell you what we did, and I'll tell you if we would have done it again. 